The pilot takes a deep breath and prays. He sights his target and banks hard to the left. The engine roars under the strain of gravity. The target is lined up. The pilot pushes down on the flight stick. The plane dives toward the ocean below. Wedged in between the metal ring of the tachometer is a picture of the Emperor of Japan. Clutched tightly in the pilot's hand is a piece of cloth with his family's name embroidered on it. A feeling of calm washes over him as the battleship gets closer and closer and closer. Less than a year prior, the Japanese soldier sits in a large barracks with a bunch of his comrades. They're playing cards and smoking cigarettes. A veil of smoke fills the air as the soldiers enjoy some downtime after a campaign on a small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The soldier has fought in several battles for the Emperor. His duty is to defend Japan against the Allied threat. He wears a freshly wrapped bandage around his shoulder where an enemy bullet lodged itself in the last battle. A high-ranking officer enters the barracks. All of the men immediately stand at attention. The commander walks up to the Japanese soldier and hands him a plain white envelope. In it is a folded piece of paper. The soldier takes out the paper and reads it. It's a letter directly from the Emperor. The letter asks the question, will you serve your country as a kamikaze pilot and bring glory to Japan? Below these words are three options, volunteer willingly, volunteer, or no. However, there is really only one option that any soldier can choose, unless he wants to bring dishonor upon himself and his family. The soldier checks the volunteer willingly box and hands the envelope back to the officer. The other soldiers congratulate him as he's about to make a great sacrifice for his country. He'll be a hero. The soldier packs his possessions into his standard issue tan sack and follows the officer out of the barracks. He's put on a transport to be taken to the closest air base where he'll be trained by the Japanese Air Force. The entire trip, the soldier thinks about what lies ahead. He thinks about the honor that being a kamikaze pilot will bring to his family, the sadness of not seeing his mother again, the pain of being engulfed in a fiery explosion. But to die for one's emperor is a privilege. The newly recruited kamikaze pilot reaches the air base where he'll be trained. He stands in a row of soldiers with the same determined look on their faces. He wonders if this is just a facade or does every one of these kamikaze pilots believe in doing the will of the emperor for the glory of Japan, even if it costs their lives. The soldiers stand at attention. The commanding officer announces that they're about to be in the presence of greatness. It'll be a privilege that so many others in the country only dream of. They're about to meet the emperor. Emperor Hirohito rides down the dirt road on a white horse toward the newly recruited kamikaze pilots. The sun reflects off of his medals and sword. The horse gallops in a steady cadence reminiscent of the beats of a war drum. Hirohito stops just in front of the line of men. The soldiers look upon the emperor, their eyes wide, trying to keep their resolve even though they're filled with admiration and awe. Emperor Hirohito tells the kamikaze pilots that it is their duty to bring honor to Japan. He's requesting their service personally. This is a special request because the emperor is the embodiment of the country. He is practically a deity. Hirohito leaves and the soldiers are left with their thoughts. They're put through training and tests to teach them basics for flying a plane before the more technical training begins. The soldier has learned from talking to the other kamikaze recruits that, like him, many of the kamikaze pilots went to Japan's best universities before the war. The emperor isn't just sacrificing the lower classes to the war machine. Instead, some of the most intelligent people in the country are being put into planes loaded with explosives in order to give their lives for Japan. The soldier sits in a classroom with old wooden desks and chairs. The officer at the front of the room teaches lessons around suppressing fear and other troublesome emotions. The soldier is to maintain a clear head and do his duty. That's it. There's no need to worry or be nervous because this is the kamikaze pilot's destiny. There's nothing more important than serving the nation. The officer explains that even if the soldier were to die, it's for a worthy cause and will be the ultimate fulfillment of duty. The lesson ends with the officer commanding the kamikaze pilots in the room to carry out their mission or do not return. The soldier wonders if by some miracle he were to survive the mission, what should he do next? His commanding officer just gave him the order not to return, so if he survives, can he go home? Weeks of training go by and the soldier is no longer considered a recruit. He's now a kamikaze pilot and will be given his final mission soon. Before his final flight across the Pacific Ocean, the kamikaze pilot is asked to write a letter to his parents. It'll be delivered when his mission is completed. He sits silently looking down at the blank piece of paper. He takes a deep breath and writes seven words that will be delivered to his mother and father upon his death. I have brought honor to our family. The kamikaze pilot folds the piece of paper and places it inside the envelope. On the way out of the barracks, he hands it to his commanding officer. He looks out across the airfield. The tarmac radiates heat. 
the smell of gasoline fills the air. Mechanics work on engines as soldiers help mount the explosives to the kamikaze planes. The roar of engines is deafening. The airfield is a conglomerate of older plane models. These previously retired planes are now used for one thing, getting loaded with extra fuel and explosives and flown into the side of allied targets. The kamikaze pilot walks toward his aircraft. It's an old fighter plane with a rusty propeller and chipped paint across the fuselage. He runs his hand along the wing, thinking about how this will be the last time he stands on the ground of his homeland. Soon he'll be in the air, and then sent to whatever comes after this life. The pilot grabs onto the warm metal railing of the ladder leading to the cockpit. He climbs halfway up and turns his head to watch his comrades running to their aircrafts and preparing to take off for their final mission. He feels a sense of duty, but also a pain in his heart that he'll never be able to have a family of his own. He releases a sigh and continues to climb. The kamikaze pilot swings his legs over the side of the cockpit and slides into his seat. The flight stick is a little wobbly and the glass on several of the dials is cracked. This plane must have been retired years ago, maybe even before the war had started. He slides the canopy over his head, enclosing himself in the cockpit. The canopy glass has become murky from oxidation in time. The kamikaze pilot looks out at the airfield one last time. He pulls out the choke and signals to the mechanics to start the engine. They pull down hard on the propeller. Nothing happens. The pilot cranes his neck to look at the mechanic. He reaches up, grabs the propeller, and pulls down again with all his strength. The engine roars to life. The propeller turns for a few seconds, and then the engine dies. Could this be a sign, he thinks? He's heard stories of kamikaze pilots being ready to carry out their missions, but the planes wouldn't start. The older modeled aircrafts were stripped to their bones so they could be loaded with more explosives, but very little work was put into maintaining the plane's engines or machinery. The kamikaze pilot sits in the cockpit. He's filled with a mix of emotions. On the one hand, if the plane doesn't start, he'll get to spend more time in the land that he loves. On the other, he'll not be doing his duty to that very country. It's an internal struggle that many kamikaze pilots have to deal with. Another mechanic runs over to the plane with a wrench in his hand. The two mechanics begin frantically working on the engine. The pilot watches as plane after plane takes off from the runway and flies over the dark blue waters of the Pacific. Suddenly, there's a deafening bang. Smoke bellows out of the engine. The propeller begins to turn. It turns faster and faster. The engine hums to life, and the pilot pulls back on the throttle. The engine's making a gurgling sound, and every minute or so spews out black smoke. But the mechanics give the pilot a thumbs up and remove the parking blocks from the tires. He's ready to go. The plane moves toward the runway. He waits for the signal. When it's given, he pushes the throttle to full. The engine roars. Smoke pours out of the exhaust pipes. The plane lurches forward, pushing the pilot back against his seat. He pulls back on the flight stick and the plane rises into the air. He moves toward his squadron and glides into place. They are now airborne and flying toward their target. The fleet of ships they're going to intercept is not too far off the coast of Japan. The time to contact is only a couple of hours. About halfway into the flight, the pilot watches as several of the planes in the squadron run into mechanical problems and plummet into the depths of the ocean. Eventually, the fleet appears on the horizon. They're battleships, destroyers, and an aircraft carrier. They look like little toys in an endless bathtub. The pilot grips the flight stick tighter. This is it. This is what he's been trained for, and this is what the Emperor demands. He'll finish his mission and bring honor to his family and country. The squadron of planes begins to descend. There are bright flashes of light coming from the fleet of ships. The sky is filled with explosions from anti-aircraft shells. The planes dodge and weave around fiery shrapnel and clouds of smoke. The kamikaze pilots are almost directly above their targets. Planes begin taking off from the aircraft carrier to try and intercept as many of the kamikaze aircraft as possible. The Allied forces are well aware of the kamikaze tactic by now. The more desperate Japan becomes, the more dangerous the war gets. They've been planning and putting countermeasures into place. However, if a single kamikaze pilot makes it to its target, the damage can be immense. The pilot pushes his flight stick forward. The plane goes into a nosedive. He looks to his left and sees one of the other planes blown from the sky by an anti-aircraft shell. He looks to the right and sees a missile that's been deployed from one of the larger aircrafts. He knows that inside this missile is a man and a ton of explosives. The pilot has been crammed inside the missile with no means of getting out since the device was mounted to the plane back at the airbase. The kamikaze missile will free fall for as long as possible, then at the last moment the pilot will engage the thrusters of the missile and he'll maneuver it to his target. The missile is slender and smaller than an aircraft, therefore it's much harder to destroy. The pilot turns his head to look straight through the cockpit windshield. He takes a deep breath and closes his eyes. The battleship he's flying toward gets closer and closer and closer. 
During World War II, Japanese kamikaze pilots were revered as heroes by their country and deemed an enormous threat by the United States military. These pilots were willing to give up their own lives to serve their country. The word kamikaze means divine wind. We know about how kamikaze missions were used by the Japanese in battles like Pearl Harbor or at naval installations in the Pacific from survivors of such attacks. We also know about the kamikaze pilot experience from individuals who encountered mechanical issues with their planes and were unable to complete their missions. By the end of World War II, almost 4,000 Japanese pilots died in kamikaze missions. It's still disputed how effective these missions were in terms of damage to Allied ships and bases. Kamikaze missions continued all the way up until the end of the war when Emperor Hirohito announced Japan was surrendering on August 15, 1945. Over the years, the Japanese people have viewed the kamikaze pilots with mixed feelings. Some saw them as heroes who were doing their duty during a time of war. Others saw their acts of suicide as shameful. Either way, the life of a kamikaze pilot must have been a difficult struggle between giving up one's life and doing their duty for the glory of the country. This was an internal battle waged within each kamikaze pilot during World War II. Now check out China vs Japan, who would win, army military comparison. Or watch The Attack on Pearl Harbor, surprise military strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy Service.